Uh, I'll give you a case in point that I brought up briefly yesterday. This, this, uh, uh, the fact of stem cell research, as many people in this room no doubt are aware, stem cell research is one of the most promising lines in, in biology to generate medical therapies. Uh, and it is not being funded at the federal level uh, for reasons that are religious, but for re because, because we have this idea that based on uh, rather vague uh, notions of theology that in every fertilized ovum there is a soul and you can't privilege the, the interests of one soul over another even if one is in a petri dish and the other is in a, a man with Parkinson's disease. Um, and uh, it's, a lot has been said in this conference about science not being able to answer questions of morality. Well, I think this is a question of morality that science has answered. Uh, if you look at the details, if you look at the, the human embryos that are destroyed in stem cell research, uh, what is a three-day-old human embryo? It is a collection of 150 cells. Uh, that may sound like a lot of cells to, 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 to lay people, it does, but there are 100,000 cells in the brain of a fly. Uh, now, we, it seems to me if, if our concern is about suffering in this universe, uh, it is rather obvious that we should be more concerned about killing flies than about killing three-day-old human embryos. Now, this, this may sound like a very provocative claim. I would argue that it shouldn't if you look at the details. Now, many people, of course, will argue, well, the difference between a fly and a three-day-old human embryo is that a, a, a three-day-old human embryo is a potential human being. Uh, this runs into problems. Every cell in your body, given the right manipulations, every cell with a nucleus, is now a potential human being. I mean, literally, every time you scratch your nose, you have committed a holocaust of potential human beings. Uh, so the, the argument for, for a cell's potential doesn't get you anywhere. Uh, but let's, let's take this a little bit further. Let's say we granted that every three-day-old human embryo has a soul worthy of our moral concern. Uh, there are other problems that await this, uh, this uh, description. First of all, embryos at this stage can split into what we call identical twins. Uh, now, is this a case of, of one soul splitting into two souls? Embryos at this stage can fuse into what we call a chimera. There are many people in this room could have developed in this way. Now, I, I suspect that there are theologians trying to figure out what has happened to the extra human soul in such a case. Uh, it, it's time we realize that this arithmetic of souls doesn't make any sense. It's intellectually indefensible, but it is morally indefensible, given that these notions really are prolonging the scarcely endurable misery of tens of millions of human beings. And because, uh, because of the respect we accord religious faith, not even just people of faith, even advocates of stem cell research uh, accord this the, the faith respect, uh, we can't have this, this dialogue uh, in the way that we should. So I submit to you that if, if you think that the, the, the interests of a blastocyst, a three-day-old human embryo, just may trump the interests of a little girl with spinal cord injury or, or a person with full body burns, uh, your moral intuitions have been obscured by religious metaphysics. Uh, and this is a kind of blindness that is very well subscribed in our society. And it's a blindness that goes by another name. It goes by the name of religious faith. And we have been cowed into respecting it. <laughs>